so first of all i'd like to say that the reservation policy which is laid down in the constitution for uh, categories like the scst and obc is basically a question of representation of large sections of the indian population which have been historically left out of uh, both education and the decision making processes uh, because of a uh, the exclusion being practiced against a section of people through the caste system or the caste hierarchy that has existed in our country for a long time because of which those who worked with their hands the artisans and the ones who were uh, you know considered um, you know lower down in the caste hierarchy have historically been uh, discriminated against and left out of this process uh, the, the statistics about this is very clear if you look at the number of uh, first it was even in the student population and later on in the distribution of teachers faculties across the country in uh, colleges and universities where their representation was not in keeping with their population at all in fact uh, the population would roughly be uh, the estimated at about 85% there are some disputes about it but we haven't had a census for a very long time but roughly you have about 55% of the other backward classes and 25% of the SC and ST taken together so initially the reservations for SC and ST had come in through the constitution uh, just after independence after the india became a republic and the constitution was framed but for the other backward classes it took a very long time the mandal commission was set up for example and uh, its reports were not implemented by successive governments and finally in 1991 the vp singh government decided to implement it for government jobs and for government educational institutions first of all government jobs and government education institutions are just a small number from the large number of institutions available government jobs are a minuscule minority of the total uh, you know number of jobs which are mostly in the private sector or in small business and elsewhere but it was felt that at least where the government is uh directly funding uh, institutions or it is in government sector the government can insist on the implementation of this policy which is laid down in the constitution now there was a huge resistance to the implementation of these policies which is very natural because um if a small percentage of the population has been beneficiaries of the resources of the country and historically there are the this conditioning against uh certain sections there will be a resistance to change but uh over a period of time some amount of inclusiveness was achieved for example let us take our university delhi university in delhi university despite the reservation for scst having been there uh in the constitution and in law but it was implemented in teaching positions for the very first time in 1996 and that is uh, probably a fallout of the mandal commission after which there was a uh, political pressure generated from the sections who had been left out and because of that universities vice chancellors were summoned by parliamentary standing committees and told to either implement it or just resign and as a result of that the momentum for reservation for scst was stepped up and it got implemented for the first time till then you would hardly have one or two uh, teachers from these categories in out of say 6 or 7000 teachers in the entire university subsequently many many years later we had uh, the obc reservation came in uh, in 2007 but before that if we go back to the reservation policy that was followed initially in 1996 uh, the way in which the reservation was implemented for scst was through a vacancy based roster a vacancy based roster applied only to the fresh vacancies coming up and not to the existing teachers there was something called the 40 point roster in which uh, the first post was reserved for sc and the fourth post was for st and so on until out of 40 you had nine posts reserved which would achieve the percentage of 15 and 7 and a half for the two categories uh, respectively 
uh, the the idea probably was that because there has been historical deprivation we must early on give an opportunity to these categories so that we start correcting the imbalance that has been there in our society however within a year a new system came in um and that was a post based roster uh as a result of a supreme court judgment called rk sabarwal versus state of punjab of 1995 the government of india then declared through a notification uh, brought about by the dopt on the 2nd of july 1997 that we have to follow a post based roster which takes into account the existing posts in the institution as on 2797 and in of all the existing posts in a cadre cadre the dopt said was all posts which are to be filled by a, the same selection committee process and the same pay scale which carry the same pay scale so that's all they said and they said that you have to uh, reserve the posts in the entire cadre and then later on whichever new posts are coming up they get added at the bottom in a manner in which the entitlement of the category is uh, achieved and you cannot get more than your entitlement that's what the supreme court said so they said that you don't reserve the first post you reserve the seventh post for the first post reserved for sc is the seventh post why the seventh because the entitlement in the first post is 0.15 15% in the second is 0.30 and so on it becomes a whole number only when you reach the seventh post so you can't reserve a fraction of a post so a whole post is reserved for an sc only when you reach point number 7 similarly for the st it was point number 14 and then sc again point number 15 and so on so it makes it easier to implement the reservation because at one point of time you don't have so many vacancies so it's not easy to delineate that you have so many for sc so many for st you have a roster system so that ensures that you will get uh, over a period of time 20 uh, 15 and 7.5% for sc and st respectively so now when after the vacancy based roster was replaced by the post based roster by delhi university we kept the cadre as the department in the vacancy based roster it was the department we did not change it to the whole college at that time it was not realized that there was of course a lot of apprehension many of us i was in the executive council uh, we said that you know the post based roster makes it very slow reservation but uh, the government had decided and the, the university had no choice it seems although the supreme court had very clearly said that you follow the post based roster after achieving the required percentage of 15 and 7 and a half and uh, if wherever it is 27 for obc but somehow the delhi university decided that we have to adopt it now and dopt also said you have to adopt it now so it was started but it was applied to departments and the result of that was because our departments are quite small often you do not reach the 14th post for a long time so for de- departments which had less than 13 posts there was a separate way of doing the roster which was called the 13 point roster in which you follow an l shape after reaching the bottom uh, if you have six posts you fill after the sixth point you move uh, horizontally in an l shape and the st post comes at the end of that horizontal line that is point number 14 it's not as if it's missing there is a misconception it is not missing but it comes at point number 14 so the problem is that that was so late because vacancies were few and far between so we were not reaching the st position in most departments as a result from 1997 till 2013 because of the department wise roster being followed uh, we hardly have any sts in various departments in the university and in the colleges um obc reservation started very late in 2007 and the fourth post was reserved and so on so that also very little of that happened because the appointments more or less froze after 2010 Uh, for no good reason we were not told why appointments are not taking place now in 2006 government of india seeing that in education institutions the cadre is being misinterpreted to being the department because all the d- disciplines have the same selection committee same means the composition is laid down in ordinance 18 and we have the same pay scale for assistant professors associate professor is a different cadre professor is a different cadre and assistant professors is one so it was wrong to do it department wise not only that 
Because of that, the benefit of reservation was not actually accruing to the people for whom the policy was made. So the government of India may, uh, sent an order to the UGC under Section 20, which makes it mandatory for the UGC to then take action. The UGC has failed to have uh, reservation properly implemented in the universities. Therefore, it is now declared that you have a strict policy of uh, strict guidelines for implementing reservation policy in which department wise reservation is prohibited. It became the whole college or the whole university so that your entitlement is reached. Reason is because if you get many fractions in departments, if you look at the whole college, then that fractions add up to a whole post, which you would not get if you just looked at it department wise. And so that was the order of the UGC, which unfortunately many universities just neglected to follow because there is a resistance always to uh, doing justice to people who have been historically deprived. Finally, in 2013, Delhi University adopted the 200, it's called the 200 point roster, which is university or college based. But there were some distortions which had crept up in it. It was not the way in which the DOPT had outlined. And Duta kept protesting about that, um, that you should correct it because the concept of backlog. Backlog is if you've adopted the policy, but you don't fill up the post by declaring people not found suitable or you nobody applies, then that post has to be filled up. The backlog post has to be filled up before you distribute the vacancies, 50% of the vacancies to reserve categories. First, you fill up the backlog vacancies. All of it is laid down in the, uh, uh, in the Constitution, in the Section 16 even the backlog vacancies part. But the roster that came in in 2013 uh, did not take care of the backlog. It started from 2013 instead of 2000, uh, 1997. It didn't uh, take care of the way in which the running roster had to be followed. There were many problems with it. So as a result of that, there was a lot of manipulation possible because if the post reduced by one or increased by one in a department, the entire roster would change. So we found that people's categories also kept shifting. So it was a, quite a mess. And many colleges, we still didn't get any reserve category person, for example, in ST, in um, Aryabhat College, for example. So the Duta kept representing to the UGC, to the SC Commission, to the Parliamentary Standing Committee. And finally, the Parliamentary Standing Committee brought out a report which upheld our objections and said that this is wrong. It's a big mess. It cannot be done like this. Please set up a committee to settle it. Then the university dragged its feet and finally set up a committee in 2016, did not allow the report to come out. I mean, we feel vested interest, did not allow meetings to take place. That is called the Kali Committee. The Kali Committee upheld finally what we had, the objections that we had made and made some recommendations, which would be a corrective mechanism. But by then what had happened was the High Court had ordered appointments to take place. We said that please correct the roster before you start permanent appointments. But six months passed, Kali Committee report was not brought out. And all colleges by then had made their rosters and brought out their ads. So at that time, the Duta felt that, okay, now we must let one round of appointments take place because people of all categories, SC, ST, OBC in general, had been suffering for long years as ad hoc teachers. And there was a great opening because of the high court intervention that the post would be filled up and we must make use of it. So we were trying to push to have quickly have permanent appointments, even on the basis of a roster, which is somewhat flawed, although it was a 200 point roster. After that, <clears throat> In three departments uh, in the university, appointments took place. And in one college, permanent appointments were made in Dalatram College, in psychology department. And the long-serving teachers were made permanent, which was what the Duta wanted. But soon after that, an Allahabad High Court judgment, which had come in 2016, uh, said that the rosters cannot be uh, university or college wise they have to be department wise in other words it was doing a complete u-turn on the strict guidelines of the UGC and in fact it squashed two of the clauses in the UGC guidelines which had precisely said the departments cannot be the basis so it was a complete u-turn and uh, the government did not even challenge it in 2016 or 17 in the Supreme Court. It did not even defend its own policy. Some individual went to the Supreme Court and lost so the Supreme Court in 2017 had already upheld the Allahabad High Court judgment. Allahabad High Court had um, objection was basically on the grounds that 
uh, since a person from one department can't teach in another department, if only reserve posts come out in one department, what does a person from the general category do? So, in fact, that is one of the criticisms because of the unimaginative way in which the rosters were implemented. The duty had a way forward in which we said you decide the entitlement for the whole college but distribute the posts proportionately in different departments so no department is fully reserved or fully unreserved. It's not a matter of accident where it comes. You have a policy in which you have diversity in every department which will ensure both social diversity and academic diversity which is absolutely essential. So, but that we were not able to get what recommendation that we had made implemented nobody took it seriously because the vice chancellors think they're god and they know better than everybody else so there was no consultation with the teachers about what was implemented so that objection in some sense there is some validity in that but the way forward is not to make it department wise which will wipe out the numbers of reserved posts which is exactly what happened the the government on the other hand instead of challenging that straight away brought out a notification on the 5th of March 2018 uh, saying that from within a month all colleges and universities must make department-wise rosters. Now that was a big blow to us for two reasons. One was that the, the, uh, the quest for social justice would be completely reversed and squashed. The second thing was that 4,500 teachers who were ad hoc were appointed against the 200-point roster. So the sudden change and all the screening and everything had been done. Sudden change would mean no more appointments and then even the ad hoc appointments were in danger. And we were worried that in July when they are reappointed, every four months they are reappointed, they would be all out because the categories would change. So Duta had to move heaven and earth to actually ensure that the same ad hocs continued even in July. Uh, we kept representing, we had agitations and the minister promised us that we will file an SLP in the uh, Supreme Court, which they did. But we don't think that they actually really uh, worked very hard to uh, convince the Supreme Court that uh, this will be a disaster. And they promised that they will also bring out, uh, because if this doesn't work out, they will bring a bill in Parliament to protect the constitutional mandate. Because really, uh, you know, this is a fit case for bringing a bill or an ordinance to protect the reservation policy of the country instead of having a policy which is an anti-reservation policy. But they did not. Six months they kept promising us, they didn't bring it out. And what they brought out in 24 hours was something which was completely against the principles of social justice. And that was that a 10% uh, reservation uh, of seats in the remaining 50% which was unreserved would be reserved for those in the EWS, economically weaker section, of non-SCST OBC. Now that was really too much because... Up till now, in the UR, everybody could compete. Now they're reserving 10% of it for non-SCST OBC, so they can't compete even in the UR. And having a poverty level defined as an income of 8 lakhs was really ridiculous. One is that it's not a well-defined group. I mean, economic, your income level is something that keeps changing with time. And so it is not a well-defined class. It's an individual based thing, and even that individual with time does not remain in the same income bracket. So it is a completely unconstitutional measure, which is not a measure of social justice. If you want to alleviate poverty, you have to use other methods like uh, uh, maybe Manarega and employment opportunities and gen educational prospects for everybody. <clears throat> but this was like a slap in the face of the historically deprived sections who were already, for example, the percentage of uh, reservation given to OBCs is only 27% because you couldn't uh, breach the 50% ceiling whereas their population by any estimate is more than 52%. So if you can breach that 50% ceiling then why will not the OBCs demand 54% reservation instead of 27% reservation in keeping with their population. So you know this has opened up, opened up many many areas but basically the idea that that your uh, social discrimination which you've suffered uh, for centuries is now not going to be addressed is something which is really going taking us backwards in time and bringing back that whole uh, you know Manu Smriti instead of the constitution where you want to keep people out of education. One last point I want to make it that I strongly feel that one of the reasons the education system is not delivered even when we had our public funding you know, we've had it for many years but now it's being reversed. One reason it has not delivered the goods in terms of really promoting rational and independent thinking which in the way in which it should have. Many of us have tried. We've tried for reform and so on. But 
all of us agree that there's something seriously lacking, in, you know, uh, maybe we blame ourselves. But I think one of the things that has happened is that our faculties have never been diverse. And, you know, when the faculties are not diverse, the faculties are drawn from 10 or 5 percent of the population, then the rich experience of people who are from the grassroots, of the different cultures, whether the tribals or people from other sections, that is not brought into the experience of the classroom. And students' reservation policy has been working better. So there is some diversity among students, but it's not there among the teachers. So one is that there's lack of communication, possibly. Second is that when uh, your rational thinking or independent uh, sort of your quest for justice clashes with your class interest, class interest takes takes over. So when, for example, the Mandal Commission, which made perfect sense in a country, I mean, like in the in South Africa, having reservation for the blacks after independence had come, would make perfect sense, or in Saudi Arabia for women, uh, or for blacks in the US. But in India, because of your vested interests and your conditioning, you would oppose it, not because it is rational to oppose it, but because your class interest uh, takes, you know, take, takes over at that stage. And, and you, you, therefore, promoting independent thinking then comes to a halt at that stage. So many of us strongly feel that if that diversity comes, and that is exactly the danger for those who do not want to share the resources of the country and want to continue with this uh, kind of colonization of the country, not by the white, uh, you know, by the British, but, or by a foreign power, but by an elite section of the country. They want that colonization to continue. Uh, that is why it is so important for them that they don't let people from the deprived sections get educated and articulate like uh, Chandrasekhar Azad, uh, Ravan, or like Jignesh Mavani, and a whole lot of other people, young leaders who've come up, they're beaten back. You don't want more such people. So in a sense, you're driving people either to commit suicide or leave or not even enter the institution, like Rohit Damiola case. There are hundreds of such cases. We only get to know of a few. So we have to, all of us together, because, I mean, it's a question of our integrity. Are we only going to speak in our own class interest or are we going, going to talk about the welfare of the country? What is good for the country? What is justice? Right? What is a democracy? That is what all of us have to decide. And that is why the DOTA, I'm proud to say, today, is one of the few trade unions which has taken a leading position on the question of social justice. And I'm very happy to be part of that movement.